Okay, so our first one would be the. We do the country club. See the Canandaigua Ken Country Club. Perfect. Looking for a single site plan approval for a forty by eighty foot. Is this a vent tent and renovated barn? So what I is don't think. I don't think the the event tent. I think it's a. Uh, what do we got? It's it's more of a pole barn, right? Yeah, so what it is is they're taking the tent and basically putting a pole barn in and then they're yeah. renovating they're renovating the west side of the existing um, yeah. utility barn to have yeah, careful to have um, the bathrooms and a line kitchen. So the 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 building that's there, the utility barn that's there now is already is already serviced by water and gas. Um, what they want to do is put bathrooms in there, and then the plan is to put a pump tank to pump that, to pump the um, the bathrooms and the line kitchen um, water to the existing lateral that is on the northeast corner. We have had um, some talk with the county about that lateral that's there, and we're going to replace that lateral as well. So Okay. I would say that's almost not even part of this project as far as... Yeah, that's uh, separate, but we wanted to show it just in case you guys needed to see yeah. it for like disturbance wise. And I would I would change the name from event tent to give them an idea of what you're actually building as far event as barn. Pole, pole barn or something structure and give them an some sort of elevation or picture. We will. Or when, we have, when we get to when we get to them, we'll give them the whole package and just make sure they know that it's not just a tent. It's a it's a structure now. Yeah. I'm just saying that the plan says tent. Yep. I'm going to call it a structure. We'll call it a structure instead, and we'll make sure we give the. Uh, oh, the yeah. Plan. Like, but it, is it going to be open sided? Is it going to yeah, be. Yeah, it's going to have the ability. It's going to have open sided when they want to, but they're also going to have like ability to close it off if the weather's not too great. Kind of like, okay. the, you know, they can roll up the sides, but they're more of a permanent type. Yeah. Any variances? It's already so close to the proper or the lake and everything like that. But you already have a pad there and everything, Correct. so yep. it's not getting any closer. Again, you're addressing the uh, the drainage and stuff off the building, so I don't think I have any comments on it. Is there any other utility connections to this proposed, or just there, no? There's a gas and water. We'll probably extend the water, the gas through the building to get okay. to that, but that'll be interior. Okay. If that there's, changes, there's, we'll add it. There's no cooking. There's no. There uh, will be cooking. There's going to be. I believe there's going to be a line kitchen in there. So we might have to add some sort of grease trap or something like that. Okay. Oh, not like in the renovated barn or the invent building. In the utility barn. In the renovated barn. So the renovate the, the 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 proposed event tent we'll call it the structure is is going to be the same usage. There's a bar in it now. Okay. And that's going to stay the same. But the the renovated utility barn to have bath it's going to have bathrooms kind of like a bridal suite and okay. there, i believe there's going to be a line kitchen in it so i'll just that. i'll just cover that under building permits as far as like suppression yeah. egress everything like that perfect okay chuck <laughs> you're on mute morning <laughs> any comments uh, just, uh, sorry for being late. Uh, not really, not now. I, I, I sort of got in the middle of the conversation. It's that we're talking about the country club and mm -hmm. I guess they're ever, ever growing, uh, use of the property out there, which in a way is good. Yep. Yeah. It looks like they want a more permanent building to hold events under because the, they apply for tent permits every year and maintenance on it and stuff. So it looks like they want a little more hard-sided structure a little more durable. Yeah, they want to they want to you know be able to do i think what the plan is to be able to use it a little bit more you know early season and late season some weddings and stuff yeah that's what it's for they want to try to i think the one thing is is, is is helping compete with the new the new uh, lake house too so yeah the thing is is they probably would have a difficult time heating it or anything like that they couldn't use those propane things or anything like that inside the structure Right, that would have to be something more of like an HVAC system if they wanted to do that, right? But they would have to meet the building code as far as energy code compliance. And I'm pretty sure it would be very difficult to do so with the pad and no insulation under I'll it. I'll let them stuff. know. I'll let them know. Yeah. 
I know uh, Hamlin was working on it, so I'm sure he's aware. Okay. I, I didn't look at the site plan, so I did. I don't know exactly where this is on the property, but uh, any uh, any issues with the lake or the uh, Fulbrook Chuck, Chuck, Creek? It's, you're familiar with the country club, right? Yeah, relatively. I can't say I'm a member, so <laughs> too exclusive it's, um, for me. There's they have that tent that there that's there now, and this structure is going to be placed right on top of the, the existing the existing footprint, and then. The utility, a portion of the large utility barn that's on the south side, on the north side of the um, Fallbrook Brook. Okay. Um, it's they're just renovating that barn. The the footprint's not going to change, so pretty much all the footprint is staying exactly where it is. They're just going to put a, a a permanent structure where the tent is, and then renovate a section of the utility barn for bathrooms, a bridal suite, and I okay. believe they want to put a line kitchen in to to help support the the um, the events. The existing and, barn used for, uh, uh, you, uh, you said utility, but yes, uh, the and then, and then what they're, what they're the, the, they also have another plan which involves the, the city planning department for a new utility barn along um, Lakeshore Drive, but that's in the city of Canandaigua. They have a little section that's part city. So that'll be the city's a project in the city of Canada, and they're going to move some of their utility operations to that that's section. Run, that's running concurrently with this application. The Not application right now; it's, it's in plans. They haven't they haven't started it yet. We just started planning it. Okay. All right. So, to, sorry to prolong the discussion. Thank you, Lance. You doing the checklist? Yep, and I will get them to you today. Not like the last time. Okay. Um, I also I also need to know about referrals. Uh, we're gonna have to go to county because it's so close to the lake and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, commercial. County. Probably sewer because they're gonna be connecting. Yep. Kevin Olvaney. Yep. Kevin Olvaney. I would go to um, Jim Fletcher for water, even though it's an internal connection, just in case he's got any thoughts. Yep. And the ECB. Seeker. Um, this is under 4,000 square feet. Therefore, it's a type two action under Seeker. And it's already it's already got a concrete pad and stuff. It's not like they're they're putting more impervious surface in. Yeah. Okay, and I guess uh, with it going to the county, we're looking at May 18th, right? For the for the planning board. Yeah. Okay. Looks good. So yeah, Chris, you said no impervious surface. Is that? Net zero, or is it very little? Well, that's the thing. They they already have concrete right. pad where the tent was, and they got site approval and everything. But and they are expanding adding the more. barn, right? Yeah, the barn's already there, so they're adding an infiltration trench for some stormwater and everything. Yeah, there's a little bit of pavement that's going to be added in walkways, but we're also taking some pavement out that, you know, it, it's it's pretty close to not any more um, impervious area. We could give a calc if the town wants it. It's pretty, it's pretty minimal if it's negative. Okay, thanks. Yep. All right. Moving on to, let's see, Venenzius got the 4157 Woolhouse Road single stage site plan for a new single family dwelling. Pretty long driveway. The driveway is mostly in right now, Chris. Yeah, they had gotten a permit earlier to do that. Yep. So they're getting water from an existing or an adjacent parcel? Yeah, there's an easement to the rear that comes up and goes all the way to 21. And <clears throat> when Brian McCabe um, developed this, he put in 
three separate inch and a half water lines. And then this one's got its own, you know, access easement. So. Yeah. So what do we do as far as like fire departments, hydrant distance from road thing? So we really, I mean, the far, there's a hydrant behind the barn there, uh, behind Brian's barn, but that's not something a fire, fire trucks could work with. Um, the closest hydrant would probably be out on Wallhouse somewhere. Yeah, I'll have to check code as far as that because. What's the distance of the driveway? It's long. So I think I know that at least for access wise, Chris, we would have to have pullover every yeah. so far. Every 500 just, feet? Is that what it is? Yeah, if it's over 500 feet, you're supposed to have a pullover every 250 feet along the driveway. Or a turnaround. Maybe there's an existing turnaround along the way that you can you utilize. So we're about 1,400 feet or so. Okay. And it goes to 26. That's for a hydrant. Uh, I'll have to check the pullovers for. I think it's like, it's got to be like 10 feet by 50 feet or something like that. We did one, I think it's the same kind of length that we did for the Schwab, the Dixie Schwab project. We had to do one turnaround or one pull off. Yeah. yeah 500 feet. Yep. You might have to do two on this one, Anthony. Yeah, I think because I, I'm pretty sure we're similar to the dish and swab, we did, we had to do a pull off and a turnaround. Yeah. It is long, we understand that. Yeah, I don't know if you want to do some sort of turnaround here or something. I mean, if we can get away with just a turnaround, that'd be great. I just don't know if we have the room on that driveway to put anything down that length. But you, you definitely have to put something along the length okay. for vehicles to pass each other. But I'll check code and I'll respond. All right, perfect. Other than that, the project's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. The existing gravel drive. Yep, to a certain extent. Yeah, it goes so it, it goes right, right to here. just about yeah. It goes almost okay. Down. Just need the impervious uh, surface out at the road. Yeah. Hi, Rocco. It's Dick Apple. How are you? Hey, good, Dick. This has nothing to do with the problem. Uh, the Any referrals? Is this Special septic? Fire department? Yeah, for Definitely sure. Definitely the fire department. Cheshire, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. It'll be septic, so. Septic, okay. That's what I thought. Yeah, Bill Grohl's wrapping that up right now. So can they, I are, yep, gotcha. Yep. Yeah, I'll have to go over to Tyler. I mean, Fletcher for access and everything. Mm -hmm. So Tyler, Chris Jensen, ECB. Jim Fletcher, MRV. Yep. That's a question. Actually, we can't. It's outside of the, the yeah. So, Our, not, so it's not, not the, MRV. Yeah, not, not MRV. Group. Not mm -hmm. county because it's a regular. Yep. How about ag review? I uh, might as well because it's next to a farm. So if it's next to is so Chris, if it's site plan, that that's the exemption. Is that what we're saying? What? So county referral, if it's uh, within a certain distance of an ag property, 500 feet, 
you're required yeah. to send it to the county. But is it because it's a site plan, therefore there's an exemption? I don't know all the exemptions. I do not know either, but I don't think, I mean, it doesn't have to get variances. Right. I agree. I follow you. Let's go that route. Okay, so not the county. Gotcha. No. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so we could see, we could do see her on this, Chris? Type two. Thanks. And we could do this on the uh, 11th of May meeting. Throw it on the first meeting, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Anthony, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, that should be the 25th of May for the first application. I was looking at the wrong calendar. Okay. So the 11th for this one. Michelle, could you just go over the referrals again real quick? Yep, just one second. I've got Tyler O, Chris Jensen, ECB, Jim Fletcher. Sorry, I was muted, guys. Oh, hey. you, got, you got Jim Fletcher? John? Yeah, kind of. Uh, the Ag Committee? Okay. And Chris Brown, Fire Chief Cheshire. Okay, thanks. Got it. We good to move on to the next one? You got it. Okay. Right. Next one would be uh, the sketch plan on behalf of Jeremy Fields, Venenzi and Associates, uh, proposed single fam home development on 82.67 acres, uh, just sketch plan review. So as far as the sketch plan, that's pretty complete. Uh, only comment I would have is it's a single point access, so yep. you'll be sprinkling the homes. Chris, with the sprinkler, do we with the sprinkler the way that that works with the one exit? Is it all the homes, or is it up to the thirtieth home, and then we have to sprinkle? Them? It's it's every single home, even the first ones. Yep. Oh. How about the ones out on Paris Street Extension? Those don't need. No, they have there. two points of access. Okay. How does this uh, intersection line up with what uh, Morell's proposing, Chris? It's up up to the west of there. We we can't we can't get in line with what they're doing. It'd probably be six eight hundred feet to the west, Chuck. Okay, so it's offset, yeah, but it's have, not have, fifty feet. They have okay. wetlands all over there where where they're coming out here. Okay. We can't get down into that nasty stuff. Yeah. How many lots? 51 is what I'm proposing. 51 lots. Okay. Is I have a, a couple uh, questions while I have everybody's attention. Sure. Um, yes. Would you consider this a cul-de-sac, Chris? No. OK. So we don't have to worry about that length of cul-de-sac then. <laughs> What do you mean by length of cul-de-sac? No, well, there's a thousand foot rule. No, this is a road turnaround. Okay. And then the other question is, if you'll notice, if you want to pan up to the north some, if you'll notice the houses are set to take advantage of the ridge line. So the ridge line is where the road is. So the homes on the east side are tucked in the hillside and the homes on the west side are tucked into the hillside. So that we're, I mean, do we see the homes from afar? I think you do. But if what I'm trying to do is keep the roadway on, on the ridge top to keep the homes from being on top of the mountain. Yeah, there is quite a bit of an elevation there. Oh yeah. 
and, and, and you know, there's going to be some trees left. And then the other question is, the homes right on the east side of the road there, if you notice behind those homes is uh, constrained lands, steep slopes. I'm hoping we can include that land in the constrained lands as part of the house lot. Is that possible or is that not possible? I guess we'll wait until you get, do the full application. Okay. So we can kind of see that constrained lands plan you're going to provide. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. So this is a uh, conservation subdivision. Yes. So the lots are what a half acre roughly. They're about twenty thousand square foot. That's 20, the minimum 000. in the S in the one acre. Uh huh. In SCR one, you can have twenty thousand square foot lots. So every one of them is above 20,000. Mm -hmm. I mean, it meets all the requirements for a sketch plan for comments and stuff, so. Lance, you got any comments? Yeah, let's just look at a couple of things up. Um, so obviously for sketch, none of these really apply. I think Chris, you're right on. I don't, I don't see anything that's missing um, as part of sketch, but just a couple of items that I think it's just important to reference, which I know Rocco, I know you guys know. Um, obviously uh, anytime we're dealing with wetlands, we're gonna want a delineation report to be supported with any formal application. Correct. Um, we've, you know. we've hired, we've hired um, a, a, a firm, it's, uh, it's kind of a local firm, um, the heel or something like that. They're new guys, young guys. Okay. And, yeah, again, that's, it's just- they're working, on, they're working on doing that right now. Perfect, yeah. It does not need to be supported as part of Scotch. It's just ultimately as but part of- But the area that I have, Yep. Shown as a wetland, that's very, very obvious. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, I know you guys have been doing this long enough. I'm sure they're probably pretty damn close. It's um, very obvious. You can see it in a photo, you know what I'm saying? I think if right. you turn on the layer, Chris, I think it shows as a wetland. Yeah, there you go. That's the area we show, and that's the only evidence we see of any wetlands on the entire parcel. Okay. That makes sense with elevations and stuff, you know? Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, the other thing is Shepo, it's obviously, it's, it's according to the AF, it's been designated an archaeological sensitive area. So again, any part of any formal application as part of that review, not part yeah. of the beginning process, but as part of that review, Shepo would have to be consulted with. Um, yeah. And then um, I think where I'm going with this is ultimately Seeker. As you guys know, we would have to go through lengthy review as part of that as well. But uh, in terms of sketch plan, uh, I think it makes sense. I get where you're coming from on this one. Um, I, I think as, as long as all the materials, Chris agrees that you've supplied them, I'm comfortable with it. So it, it says you are allowed 47, you're going to 50? 50, yeah. Chris, is this one of those where they get 50% allowance by the town board? That's what I'm wondering. I don't know the route. Uh, I think the, uh, the the dependents are uh, water and sewer and a street with and two access. And they're dedicating the land to the community and stuff. But I think uh, one of the key, uh, doesn't uh, you have to have two access points for getting the 15%? Isn't that part of the I don't think magic? it's that. I think it's the fact that the rest of the property is open to the entire community. Uh, uh, something about sewer. Sewer and water and two access points. If you want to check, check that. And while he's looking that up, uh, Rocco, I see you have the constricted lands, you call it. Uh, break that down, if you would, in terms of uh, what is steep slopes, what is wetlands, uh, forests. Uh, no, if, you if, if you refer to the map, Chuck, we have the wetlands. Yeah. We how much? That. Yeah, you show it, but how much? What's the area? If you could do that for us. 
and you show the steep slopes. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to break it down, but I don't have it broken down separately, Chuck. Okay, well, between now and the meeting, you can do that. That's what, that's what this meeting's for. Well, they, they didn't do a survey and everything like that yet, so I realize this is that. just kind of preliminary sketch plan. I have the total, Chuck, the, the total constrained lands. I just don't have each separate one broken down. Okay, where are we at with the 15%? I can barely read it. Uh, within areas served by public water and sewer, and a permanent public access will be granted. Well, oh, the first space. question is: Is are you trying to get fifteen percent increase? Yeah, in so this I. Well, I, I guess that I guess the three extra lots is just a Roman candle on my part. If I could, we certainly like to get more lots. And, and the way I understood it, I had to have water sewer and access to the green space, public access, which we will have. And it's, it's not just public access, like the residents and stuff, it's all the public. It will be all, it will be all the public. Uh, do we have open space land that's gonna be, uh, uh, this is only for me, my clarity, that constrained area or conserved area, that, that area would be open to the public, Rocco? It's, you see that? You, you see that area right there where, where the hand is? Yep, yep. To the left of that, that's all open space that we could dedicate, yeah. Okay. And so maybe uh, whether it comes through the review or not, maybe there's trails or something in there that would be useful to the public. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's correct. Okay. But to, for clarification, you are applying, you, you would like this to be applied to that 50% rule if we could, if it met the criteria. Yes, sir. Chris, does that formality, does that come as part of the sketch plan review or does that come as part of the actual application? It would come as like the site plan application, prelim site plan. We'd okay. have to send it to the town board before the planning board could see it. Right. So the so the planning board can look at it at sketch, provide some comments, and then from there, if Rocco puts together an application, the first step would be with the town board. Yes. Everyone else Any good? referrals? Any referrals, Chris? Lance? I don't know. I mean... Um, all right, so it's sketch. I guess my thought would be not to tie up Jim more, but I think Jim should have some conversations as this. Maybe he could provide some potential concerns that he may or may not have with this. Um, I guess I would, likewise, I would send it to the county sewer district just to get their input. Maybe their there's something. Loading. Yeah, yeah, loading and stuff. So for me, again, I, I, again, for, I think we just got to make sure it's understood that they're getting it as a sketch plan review, not as a actual application review. And I got a note from Sarah, Linda, the ECB would like to see the sketch. Okay. Would this be an ag um, committee thing too? I believe so. I believe it's in an ag district. And then uh, Cheshire Fire Department? Probably one of her, again, for sketch purposes. It's adjacent to an ag district. I think we'd be just seeking whatever input they could get. And then obviously as part of any formal application, they would be coordinated with as part of seeker and as part of a review process. We good? Yeah, what uh, you want to do it on the 11th of May? Since that's your very few, yeah, that's I don't know what the rest of the agenda looks like. From 
that, but let's put it on there for now. So just to be clear, is this going to be um, public meeting? I mean, it is a public meeting, but you get my point. Is it going to public be a hearing? Yeah, well, not a public hearing, but I know there's some format. Sometimes we do, um, we publish it in a manner that allows all the public to know that area that we're going to be discussing in a sketch. I'm not sure if you guys are going to. I will, I will send out 500 foot notices. That's where I was going. Thank property. you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So there, and there's enough time to do that now yes. for that May. Okay. Yeah. I don't publish in the paper, but I send 500 foot notices. Right. No, that's, that's, that's appropriate. I, I appreciate the clarity, Michelle. Thank you. So it's the first meeting of May. It's John. Yes, John. Okay. Thanks. So what other guests do we have at this meeting so we can get to their projects first? Uh, I saw Mr. Uh, we have a Lucas Bush and, and Which projects are those? I'm going to sign off. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Lucas Thank you. is so uh, Marathon for Gill, 34. Sue okay. Steele is 33. Okay, let's go to 33. Uh, let's see, two sheds. Sue, if you want to unmute yourself and give us a little overview. Hi, um, yes, I am uh, the applicant for um, Heather and Chelsea Medea Tompkins. They are doing some site improvements on their property. And there's the site improvements are shown here, Chris, they don't have a, they haven't pulled a permit for their patio improvements, but they do have one for the pool. Um, and they've added, they want to include two storage sheds on the <clears throat> adjacent to the pool at the end of the pool there, and they fall within the front yard 60 foot setback. The property um, currently has a shed. It, within the within the setback, pre-existing non-conforming, <clears throat> they're removing that as part of their planned improvements associated with the pool, and they'd like to replace with two additional sheds. <clears throat> that site is fairly constrained. The 60-foot setback is. Um, falls right at where a retaining wall is, and then it steep slopes up to the rear property line. Existing the house is within that setback as well. Yeah, so you can see the house is sitting within the setback and the zoning, the district is uh, RR3. It is not RLD. Um, <clears throat> so they're looking to, to put the sheds no further forward to Westlake Road than the existing house. Yeah, so I don't know if we ever, we have record of a permit for that pre-existing non-conforming shed that says it's gonna be removed because we wouldn't have permitted a shed within five foot of a house because that's a violation. Yeah, so it building. doesn't meet. I know it's odd. So they purchased the house, I think, two years ago. So that was yeah. that was there when they moved in. I'm just I'm just saying, as far as using that as the pre-existing non-conforming, it's actually a code violation because oh, okay. it's combustible and it's within five foot of the home. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's being removed. So we can we can. Do you want me to adjust the plan so it doesn't say pre-existing non-conforming? No, you can you can leave it there because it's being removed. I'm just saying. As far as saying, oh, there's already one shed, there really isn't. It's it's a violation. It's a violation. No building yeah. permit. Okay. So let's just kind of ignore that. As far as the other two sheds, yeah, the property's constrained. Uh, setback is 60 foot from this. The front yard is actually kind of a 16, where normally it looks different, like here. The driveway comes up here. The front yard's, you would think here, but because of the front being this, we had to do the setback from this line. Right, they they uh, were working along with the um, 
they were developing these ideas and plans and, and kept telling me that, you know, oh, we're putting them in the rear yard. We're putting them in the rear yard. And, and yeah. Chris, we went back and forth and I said, it's actually the front. <laughs> um, so they, this functions as the rear of their property, um, but by, by code, it is the front. There are existing, there's a row of evergreens along Westlake Road. So they are sitting behind. We placed them so that they would be screened from Westlake Road. They're also up, you know, there's a grade difference. Yeah. It, it, Westlake drops and, and their property is up higher. So visually they are out of sight. Is well. they, they're on sewer? They are not, they're on septic. Their leach field is also a, a constraining factor. It's up in the um, Northwest corner. It's on the other side of the drainage. Yeah, that oh, field here? up there. That's, that's that's where they assume it is. I, I don't have any mapping. Okay. I'm just saying because pools and stuff like that have to be like 35 feet from uh, leech lines. So yeah, the tanks are in the front of the house, uh, and okay. it, it's pumped up to that that leach field is what our understanding is. Uh, Bill Groves is the engineer who's been assisting with the project. Okay. I don't have any records of leach field. Yeah, they is, don't, they have one map that says assumed area. So. This, is this part of or next to that area where the fellow was doing the clear cutting, the trees and all that? Um, that was up on the hill, right? Yeah. That was kind of up over here, back behind. Okay, the fellow. Uh, Mr. 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 Mink, yeah. Mink, over here. California, yep. Okay. So, I don't have any other comments. Plans are very complete. Nothing from Lance. me. Yeah, nothing, nothing from me. John, okay. type two. Okay, thanks. Any referrals, county, because it's on the county road and it's a variance? It, it's multiple variances, so we probably have to right. go to the county. ECB. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Did she ask for that one, John? She didn't ask for it. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, then I guess we won't send it. She'll see this video and decide whether or not she wants it. There you okay. go. Okay, so just Ontario County, Chris Jensen. Okay, very good. Thank you. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I don't see Got it. Yeah. As far as okay. the pool and stuff, it says plans, pool, and patio, and everything. You already have the that, permit. I that's going to have to meet the setbacks and everything, too. So I have a question about that. They have the permit for the pool already. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes. so that's why okay. I was thrown off by the shed needing a variance because the pool has already been permitted. That construction is slated to start this week, rain permitting. Um, okay. So, Chris, those plans don't have the patio improvements, like the expanded patio, they, you know, standard to the pool with Northeastern. There's a three foot coping around it, but they're expanding, so they have some patio space. Chelsea has been submitting the permit application all along for, okay. for various things. So we, we must have issued that already. And then the structures, because they stick up and stuff like that, and there's multiple of them. That's why we're going to the variances. OK, but do we have to, what does she have to do for the patio? She wants just submit um, a permit for that or no? Uh, I would just send it along with the sheds. Just say install two sheds and associated patio pavers and stuff like that, because okay. they're not getting any closer to the road than the existing house. Right. Okay. Okay. What Guess meeting would we be? What meeting would we be on? It's the zoning board meeting, so. Okay. May zoning board would, is May May eighteenth, and then uh, planning board was May May twenty fifth. But we don't go to planning, right? We they don't go to planning. Zone. No planning. Okay. Yeah, May eighteenth then. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, on to Davidson Landing. Davidson Landing. 
number 34, Marathon for Gil, would be Luke. Okay. Yeah, hi, everybody. Lucas? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, so this is a existing property on Davidson Landing. It sort of currently functions as an accessory parcel to the property to the south, which is owned by the applicant's sister. Um, so currently, there's just a large tennis court on the property with a small cottage. And he's looking to build more of a single family residence on the property. So he's put together some pretty, pretty exciting architectural plans. It's a nice modern house that he worked with uh, David Lennon. And uh, we put together a site plan as well. So we're, we're calling it a building addition really the the cottage will become part of the overall house proposed. So um, the facade of that cottage you'll see in the top, yeah, the top left corner of the page. Um, that'll all be updated to sort of create this one cohesive residence. All the dock access is, is being maintained, updated, but uh, and there's a proposed pickleball court on the property. So there's going to be one variance of that, and that's for building coverage. We're reducing the lot coverage by putting the building within the tennis court footprint. We, uh, the, the building coverage itself is going up, so we're keeping the variance for that. It's on sewer. There's, there's a force main along Davidson Landing, so it's next to that as well as water. And we're yeah, have proposing you had, some. Have you had conversations with the neighbors and stuff as far as that that force main and everything? Yeah, Dan Dan Gill talked to the neighbors. He sent around a, I believe it was an email. He got some positive and some feedback. But yeah, he's let the community know what's going on. Okay. I know there's a, a contract and number of homes and stuff like that and easements and the one person has the lift station in their front yard. Yeah, and and so he's also he, he's putting off this work until he gets through the summer, um, and and that's what he's talked to the neighbors about. So hopefully we can get him ready for that. There was also some, there's a rain garden that we're proposing in order to sort of account for some of this impervious area. And he's also implementing a green roof over the screen porch you can see on this point. There's some rain garden, green roof. Yeah. yeah. Lance, I don't know if you want to comment as far as calculations for. Yeah, so all I, I guess as part of any application in the town, if you disturb more than 20,000 square feet, we're required to um, mitigate up to a two-year storm event. Uh, obviously, if you're under over the one, uh, one acre of disturbance, then head triggers something else. But 20,000 square feet is what we're looking for. Anything greater sounds like you might have had um, some elements already incorporated, which is perfect. Uh, just give me some calcs. Our calcs ultimately would need to be submitted as part of the application that justifies the size and the ability to handle that two-year storm event. Okay. I, I believe we're under 20 acres of disturbance, uh, but I can confirm that. Either okay. way, I'll provide those calcs showing what we're providing. Yeah, that, that'd be helpful. Yeah, if you're under, then, then maybe we can just make a note somewhere on the plans that you're under. Or if maybe you already have that acreage of disturbance shown on there, then that's fine. <clears throat> so the lot coverage is less because the tennis court is going away and less impervious is being put in. Huh. Okay. Precisely. Is that the concept, Lucas? Exactly, yeah. Okay. What's the net so reduction? What's the net reduction in lot coverage? It's going from forty-one to thirty-nine. It's not significant. It's a small property, so 
small areas make a big difference in terms of the size. Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of lighting that you're proposing? Outdoor lighting? Uh, there will be what maybe residential? No, nothing outside of residential. The, the court won't be lit. Uh, okay. There'll just be some, some accent, dark side compliant lighting. Okay. Is the existing uh, house on sewer currently? I believe that the existing house is connected to the neighboring parcel. So you would be tying into, Recon you would use that lateral or would you use, build a, put a new lateral in? Yeah, we're putting a new grinder pump in. And okay, so the everything. concept is you're going to pump, you're going to pump from the house to the force main and then introduce it to the force main to be, there's no gravity lines out there, I guess, huh? This portion of the force main in front of the property actually is red. I believe it, it transitions along the. Um, but, but yes, we'll have our own pump system. Okay, yeah, to get. The but then once it gets to the street or the Davis Landing, then it's gravity until it goes to the lift station that's down the street. Exactly. Hmm. Okay. Uh, shoreline guidelines, Lucas. Uh, we'll need. I don't know if you've supplied a statement yet, but you certainly need to supply at least a statement and a, a, a landscaping plan would be helpful. Yeah. Yeah, we've. It's a few I see the trees. There are two trees where I show the two proposed trees. Um, there's two existing locust trees there that are sort of choked up by some vines through them. I, I can uh, provide some better verbiage. We had an arborist and a landscape architect look at those. Originally, the, the goal is to save as much as we can, but since those trees are compromised, um, we figured let's replace them now in kind with a tree so that uh, it's not train getting back there to remove them as they deteriorate. Okay. Somebody's got some background noise. It's probably me. I apologize. Oh. Are you in the office? Yeah. Yes, I keep going back and forth between me and I forget. I apologize for that. That's all right. Thank oh, you. Good. Okay, so Land yeah, just complete. make sure you cover the landscaping. Uh, I see you've got landscape details there. And Whatever else you got to put up by the house. Uh, you mentioned the uh, green roof over the uh, patio. Uh, I wouldn't mind a, a photo from the lake just to see what the conditions are right now, kind of thing. Okay. And elevations have been submitted of the house? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, elevations and in, in conceptual floor plans. They did turn in something from shoreline guidelines. Yeah, I Might have to resend the PDF for the architect plans. I can't open them. It says they're damaged. <laughs> That's not good. I'll resend those immediately. They're they're small. I don't or <laughs> it's an 18 meg file, so I don't know if there's something you could send as far as a link so we can download them or something. And I apologize, gentlemen. Um, is this two lots or is this one lot? It's one lot with an existing home and they're just uh, putting an addition to the existing home. Okay. So they're not they're not doing work uh, you know, on another person's property house at the same time? They might be doing stuff for dock improvements later on, but that's beyond the scope of this project. Okay, perfect. I was just, I, I kept seeing that line. I wasn't 100% sure I was... I was understanding. Okay, thank you. And I show a, a new stairway on the neighbor's property. That that'll there'll be a separate permit application submitted for that. But I just wanted to show that graphically on the plan. Uh, yeah, so that that's the part goes. of the whole docks and mooring and access to the waterfront. So we can handle that in house. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I just I, I know that it'll get brought up during a review, and I just wanted to make sure I fully 
understood what was being done. Thank you. Referrals? Tyler Ohl. Yes. Uh, uh, it's, it's hooked it's to on public sewer. sewer. <clears throat> it's on public sewer? Yep. So John, John Barry. Sewer, sewer to, yep. Yep. John Barry, yep. Chris Jensen, ECB. Yep. Ontario County Planning Board, Kevin Olvaney. Yeah, because it's the variance and next to the lake and everything. Kevin Olvaney, too? Or no? Yep. Might as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is that it? I'm I'm it. Speaker Lance. Uh, residential type two. And with the ZBA requirement, uh, you're looking at the earliest uh, May 25th planning board. So it would be uh, May 18th for ZBA and uh, May 25th if they're successful for planning board. Okay, got it. Thanks. So are we going to go to Houston now, Emerson Road? Hey, right, let's go to Luke Houston. Lucas, you're welcome. <laughs> question? I, I'm all set. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks, Lucas. Okay, thank you. For coming. Yeah. We only have one left? Two. Uh, two. We have Lucas, Emerson Road, and then we have Mark for Eifer. Okay, so might as well go to the uh, Emerson Road one. I don't think Marks is here. I, I sent him the link twice, so. Yeah, he just had a baby last week. No, well, he sent me an email this morning for it. Okay. So they gave us an existing survey to show the distance from the house to the to existing roadway. I don't know what I just did. Uh, so they got 45.6 and 45.5 from the right of way to that. And then they sent us a hand sketch to show that they're going to get closer to the uh, road. They're adding a porch right here. So it's going to go to 43.6 and 43.5, which is only two foot closer than the house, which I don't understand. Lance, Chuck. <laughs> I'm lucky. Right. I guess, so I guess that's what I'm going to ask because the site plan, the building permit application says he's adding a porch. Three, six foot porch. So a porch that covers the whole screen of the front of the house. The existing survey shows it at 45.6 and 45.5. Three, so it would be down to like 30. Oh, actually, it's 30, 37.6 and 37.5 for the new. Okay, so Chuck, if you're okay with using an existing survey in the sketch plan, I'm fine as far as issuing building permits from that. If I don't think I'm not going to see it, so it's really up to ZBA. It's, oh, it's just yep. ZBA then. So this is just between us. I always prefer to see the, the surveys on these variances, but I understand, whereas if they give you relative information that works for you, Chris, and you can make a determination based on that, well, that, that is your call. It's, it's an existing survey showing where the house is with exact dimension to, right. the, to the 100th or 10th of the decimal. And if he's building a six foot porch, we can do something. Well, I'll leave it up to the ZBA. I can make a determination off it. Yeah, I think I think that's important. As long as there's enough information for you to make your your determination, you're comfortable. That's your call, and I think that works. Okay, cool. Any referrals? Uh, County it's Emerson Road. It's a uh, single family dwelling, so not county. I don't know, Lance, any ideas, any referrals? Not sewer, not anything. It's pretty much just No, I, I think you, Chris. Yeah, I think so. 
Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right, the next one's marks for Eifert. Okay, that would be 35. CP 35, yeah. So, so where's is, uh, where's he with his MUO? Well, that's the thing. We're kind of cart before the horse. <clears throat> I, I'm checking on uh, as far as where they are. If they had to go back to the town board before they go to planning board, but they'll be back at town board before the planning board meeting that would <clears throat> review this. So if they make a positive affirmation that you they can proceed to preliminary planning board, We'll keep it on the schedule, and if they don't, we have to not do it on the schedule. I got you. So he's probably just trying to get him in there so that he's got an application ready to roll in case they, with the assumption the town board's going to be in favor of it. Yeah, so there wouldn't be any delay in the process waiting another month kind of thing. Yep, I get it. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Brennan has stated at the meeting when we discussed the MUA, the advisory report, uh, that things are going to change from what he showed us then. So is, is this did. plan? Okay. Yeah, there's there's quite a bit of changes. Uh, it's a four lot subdivision, but I'm trying to think, do they have all the, the lots, meets and bounds? I think they do on this plan. plan. This is the subdivision plat. And this <clears throat> is not our town. This is Hopewell. This is Canandaigua existing conditions. This is Hopewell existing conditions. And there we go. So what they did was they changed the roads so they're kind of, they have turnabouts, they have pull-throughs. We might have to discuss setbacks of paved areas from property lines because of these turnarounds and everything. Mm-hmm. And they got two points of access, so they're not going to be sprinkler buildings. Uh, I won't issue a permit for the thirtieth building or thirtieth single-family dwelling until that second access is in and running. Mm. Do they need to be connected like they do? See how that the middle one right there. See how they have that road connection? Those two. So they that's have the road. They, I'm sorry. That's because they couldn't have a. They needed a, a full driveway to support a fire truck within 150 feet of all homes. And if it was over 150 long, they had to have a turnaround. So that's why they did these these turnarounds do, and access roads and everything. Do they show the slope of the road? Do we know what that slope is? Uh, I think they have a grading plan here. <clears throat> There we go. I guess any of the roads really, huh? So they, they look pitched when they start. Yeah, and that one's pretty decent. That goes to high point. I'm more concerned of the ones that go vertical. <laughs> These ones right here would be the, the steep ones. Yeah. Kind of behind the buildings. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. So that's we got what? One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. It's got about 14 feet of change over, I don't know what the, the scale, what is it, 50 scale? Yeah, I might print out an eight and a half by 11 and do a measurement on that one. Yeah, I'm just curious. I wouldn't be surprised as if he's over the, the requirement and we have to get some kind of a waiver. Yeah, I don't think fire trucks like driving up slopes. Fully <laughs> I don't think so either. <laughs> or coming down. This one too looks pretty good too. It's just the lack of creativity in this design. I just annoys yeah. me. And they're just trying to maximize number of houses on the property because this, this I would design with a switchback every day of the week. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I. I understand where they're coming from. I just, I feel like yeah. if well, this thing this. were to move forward, the end result isn't going to look like this. So why, why waste everybody's time? No, but I mean, look at the steepness from here all the way down to here. Yeah. I, I, again, I don't, it's going to be pretty steep. 
They're gonna have to go wider. And then how about here? The driveway is coming up. <laughs> right? Is there, did he do any grading in that area? No. <laughs> it's all right. We'll figure it out. Okay. It's prelim site, so again, yep. as many comments as you want, kind of thing. So right now, the best of our understanding, this is before not necessarily this application, but the MUO application is before the town board, correct? The town board saw it once, sent it to planning board for uh, right. comments. They sent it back to town board. It has to go on the town board agenda for advancement to preliminary site plan approval. Do we think that's going to be at their April 19th board meeting? I am pretty sure, but I believe I have to check with uh, Doug. Yeah. Okay. And then all they do is they give their thumbs up or thumbs down and then begin the process with us. Yep. Okay. So this would be what, the May 25th, a best case scenario for them? If they can address comments and stuff like that, I mean. Right, right. I'm with you. There's Doug. <laughs> Doug's right here. We're going to ask him. <laughs> hey, Doug. So, uh, this on 364, it needs to go back to the town board before it goes to preliminary site plan. Is it on the agenda? Uh, working on it, yes. I'm actually working on the agenda right now. So, yes. It'll be on the agenda. Okay. okay. So, the planning board is, Chuck emailed me the advisory report. So, now it's going back to the town board this month. And then, hopefully, the town board says yes. And then, the planning board can continue on in any way. Okay. <laughs> I would still say May 25th, though, at the earliest. Yeah, at the early, again, assuming they address our, our comments today, I'm with you. Yeah, Lance, if you could give this a fine tooth comb kind of thing, as far as slopes and. Yeah, I'm going to, I'll throw down a list as part of the checklist when I respond back to you guys later today with some big ticket items that I think probably yeah. need to be worked out or at least should be starting to work out. I'll also look at the EAF just to see if there's anything there like reports that we're going to want because ultimately it's still got to go through a coordinated review and that coordinated review, it'd be nice to have those reports up front. Okay. And I'm going to assume Chris that he didn't submit any reports with this. Am I correct? Is it just uh, a site plan? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So there's no drainage report. There's no traffic. There's no, I don't know if there's, there's wetlands at the I don't know if there's wetlands at the bottom, but those are the things that I think he should be working on. He gave us a gonna, short they gave us a short EAF, which I'm pretty yeah. sure we're gonna go for. Oh, it, it may not trigger a type one, but I'm sure the board through their review would elevate this to a full EAF because of the benefit a full EAF would provide them. So that would be the purview of the planning board, but we can make that suggestion as part of this PRC meeting. There's your uh, road profile, isn't it? That, that'll give you your slope. Yeah. I can't read it. Oh, there's 8%. Yeah, it looks like a pretty steady 8%. Is that down near 364? It's right here. You can see he lines Oh, okay, up. yeah. Remind me, Chris, is, is driveway percentage, is that Jim Fletcher's? Waiver or is that uh, variance? That's it's in this, this section as far as what planning board can waive. I think so too. It depends on what that steepness is. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, if, if it's not doesn't make sense to waive it, I mean, we listen to MRB as far as the recommendations. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I'm trying to think of. I was trying to think of the worst slope that we've had and i'll be honest i think we've the far that the most steepness that i can think of is 15 percent uh that was seneca point road i remember yeah. that I don't, I don't think we've ever crossed the line of 15 percent, but i'd have to go back yeah, that's to what i'm saying the planning board will take your recommendation and good to see you guys yeah, uh, Chris, uh, off-street parking, uh, those items, I know we always discuss that with townhomes. I see they've got, they've got some parallel parking on each, uh, each segment there, each uh, spike. 
I guess that's what they're proposing for people who come to visit. Yeah, I don't know if those spots look big enough, but we'll have to. I don't know. That's a, I assume that's what they are. And we go always get into a. You've got to have two spaces per on no, on lot off street and which would be in front of the garage or and the garage. and also includes the garage, but everybody fills the garage up with yeah. stuff. Yeah. But they have extra parking, visitor parking, and we would have to put stop signs on this so no one parks on the turnarounds and mm. side roads. Because all the roads don't look long enough to have any parking on the roadway. So I would require fire lane signs on pretty much everything. Yeah. Be nice to have rather than the back of the homes facing the lake uh, on some of those lots to have them face, you know, just be front front view, even though that's the other thing. I, I know we talked about it sketch plan as to how much of these townhomes will be visible from the lake. But that's something we can get into. It is what it is. I think there's a, yeah, there's a steep area in the middle. That's where he doesn't have any homes. Yeah, that's where it, the road jumps up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. there and there. So it'd be the eastern portion is more visible than the western portion. Yeah, that's what he's trying to do is get maximize the view from these things from the lake. Okay. So twenty uh, fifth at the earliest. Uh, Michelle, do you want to go through the referrals at this point? Sure. Like this? Yeah, <laughs> we're county for sure, right? For sure. Yep. Uh, Chris Jensen, ECB. City Fire Chief Frank and yep, Magnum, for sure. Right, not that's the only one. Um, I don't know what else, but like Tyler, John Barry. No. Would the other John fire district? Sewer district. Well? Well, the other might. fire district. Um, yeah, you might want to send it to Gorham? both, just in case. Yeah. Or Hopewell. Oh, uh, <laughs> isn't there it's a station kind of on the lake down there? Oh, Crystal, Crystal Beach. Beach? Okay, so which one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hopewell yeah. or? It, it, they're likely all to respond. So I, my thought is, is just cover it, send them to all three. They got to go to yeah. all three towns. They got to go to Hopewell and Gorham towns uh, for review as well. That's going to be more as part of seeker coordinated review, but they might as well get it as part of your guys' referral. So we can get it to them beforehand, yeah. Yep. Okay, so Hopewell, Gorham, Crystal Beach. Got that. Yep. Any, as, as, how as, about, well as, uh, towns, as well as yeah, all three towns, too. Yeah, for clarification, fire departments and to the town for inter municipal referral requirements. Uh, what about the school district? Will Bill Wright? Um, yep. It's got to go to DOT because it's a state road. Mm -hmm. Greg Trust. So Bill Wright for Ontario County DPW. Yeah, that connects over to 18 or, or yeah, 18 on the other side. Yeah, it's probably a good call. Just send it to him as an FYI. Town's going. Yeah, did, we did say John Barry. Right. Yep. And it's it's still in Candigua Lake, so probably Kevin Olvaney. Okay. Yep. And you did say the school district too or no? Couldn't hurt. Why not? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Gonna generate some kids. Several hundred houses. Right. <laughs> Michelle, could you okay. go, could you just go down that list again, please? Yes, I can. Uh John Barry. Yeah. Chris, Jens Chris Jensen, yeah. ECB, Here. Jim Fletcher, <laughs> Ontario County Planning Board, and the fire departments of City of Canandaigua, Hopewell, Gorham, and Crystal Beach. Kevin Olvaney, Greg Trost, New York State DOT, Bill Wright, Ontario County DPW. 
the school district and then the uh, town clerks that all help well Gorham and Crystal Beach. Yeah. Crystal Beach, is that a separate town clerk or? I don't know. I know it's a fire department. I don't have to, I don't think it's a separate town clerk. I think it's Gorham. It's yeah, I think, Gorham. I think you're right. Okay, thanks. And Michelle, if uh, they don't get the go ahead on the MUO on the 19th, then uh, you might as well hold up sending this stuff out till that happens. If it, if that doesn't happen, uh, this thing. Well, works. I send my, I do my referrals. I will do them next Monday. That's when we'll send them out. And if it just happens, we'll just post it as being postponed. Okay. Trying to cut down on postage. Well, I yeah. send it by email. I know. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Thank, thanks a lot. Got it. Okay, uh, the meeting uh, that's uh, is this a type one, Lance? Um, I, I have to look at there's the triggers are if you're in an ag district and you're disturbing 2.5 acres of disturbance, then it's type one. If you have a historic building uh, next to you, then that is a type one action. Or if you are in designated open space, state park, town park. That is open space. So the only question is, is, is this an ag district? Mm. Hold on. I don't think so. Well, I would think it's mm. not, I, I would think it's close to the type one. I'm just thinking in terms of environmental effect of the property. Uh, well, there, there's a way to get there. I just, the seeker wise, is it a type one? The only way I see it being triggered as a type one action would be if it's in an ag district. Then we could say definitely it's a type only, one. It's only adjacent to one. Okay, so that wouldn't trigger it. So it's probably an unlisted action under seeker requiring a short EAF. However, as I referenced earlier, the planning board can elevate it to a type one, which would be our suggestion to get us the maximum amount of environmental review as possible on this. Even if it's even if it's like 500 feet from adjacent count. Yeah, down. because it, it's got to be ag land that we would be disturbing more than 2.5 acres. I guess I forgot there's one other element. If we're disturbing more than 10 acres of land, that would trigger a type one action too. It's, it's possible we might be disturbing more than 10 acres. What did they, they didn't probably identify that on their short EIF. I just, oh, got, I just they, got an email from Brennan. He's going to try to get on before we get off, I guess. Before we get off the, if you have questions for him. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I could see them easily disturbing that much acreage. Yeah. So I guess, I guess let's just say this. Let's say, as John, for, for the notes, it should say project's going to disturb, anticipate disturbance greater than 10 acres. Therefore, the application is considered a type one action under seeker and a full EIF is to be completed. Yeah, it says they're going to disturb 15.7. Bam, there you go. And you got the land next door in, in Hopewell too. There, It's a continuation. Yeah. Of well, that's, yeah, that, that's been my dilemma all along. Do we handle them simultaneously together or not? But I don't think we can, so. Can it be a coordinated uh, type one review between Hopewell and the town? Or town of Canada? Well, we're, we're definitely going to do a coordinated review and they're, they're definitely going to do a coordinated review with you guys on their part, but technically speaking, each one can be developed um, Separate. and separately with some fire and safety requirements being met, but technically they both can st to be their own projects. Uh, well, yeah, I, I, they need a connection to County Route 18 because uh, they can't have a standalone street that ends. Right, right. The Hopewell could, I think, but not that, not far from side. side. Hopewell, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is uh, Brennan with us yet or? Nope. Nope, okay. Um, well, I got you guys here for checklists. Do you need me to do the checklist for the two zoning board applications? The two were their only ZBA applications? No, they're complete and I'll just do the uh, determinations. Okay, I will do, I'll do the site plan slash sketch plan for the marathon engineering one. Okay. And then I'll do the other ones.
while we're waiting for Brennan, if we could just quickly go over the agenda for tomorrow night. <clears throat> so Miller, Miller is okay to go. I think we've concluded that uh, yep. the subdivision that we didn't have to send to the county. Yep. Uh, we, we've got Forbes, we've got uh, Cicero. Uh, Cicero. Has Cicero submitted a revised plan at all, uh, Scott Harder, for uh, uh, a request that uh, Jim Fletcher had made regarding that easement on the lot one or lot two, was it? The, the bigger lot. Yeah, I mean, when we, when we all that, when we Chris, do you know? You, you've got when no revi talk, revised plans? For uh, the Scott Harder Cicero, the project at CPN um, 08. I didn't see anything last week. Yeah, I haven't seen anything yet. So, and Jim Fletcher said that Scott was going to put the easement on a revised plan and it would be. We uh, got available. a plan on 4 2. Okay. If you didn't get it, it's, yeah, it's, it's down in the southern corner of uh, next to that out parcel on lot, uh, the bigger lot. Yeah, it still doesn't show the easement. Um, okay. Well, we can cover it tomorrow night. No big deal. All right. Uh, we got uh, Hollis for uh, Moran. We'll go over Candega Crossing. Uh, Hoffen. That's still in limbo, Chris. For a while. Garage, we just got a plan this morning. Let's go into May. Yeah. Going to May. Bam. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, then the 27th. Let's see what we can hang in there. Chris, I saw your email regarding uh, Sawyer, Emerson Road. He submitted updated plans, but that's not till the 27th. Anyway. And uh, Aurora Solar, where, did, where, where have they fallen? Which Michelle? meeting? Aurora? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 27th, because I had to go to the county. Okay, and they've got all the uh, all their plans in although they're still so <laughs> yes i believe as well okay. um there's a couple obviously seeking variances in order to be on the 27th but right okay i see brennan's here okay good morning bren morning Sorry, guys. I don't know what happened there. You're good. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry if I look tired. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's understandable, man. <laughs> Boy or girl? Boy. Oh, okay. It's our third. <laughs> Your third boy? No, well, oh. boy, girl, boy, third child, okay. Okay. <laughs> second boy. No. So we kind of just covered referrals, uh, high plans, proximity to the property lines for the, the turnarounds and stuff like that as far as setbacks. We're going to look into the code on that. I'm, I'm sorry, you're breaking up just a little bit, Chris. You say the proximity turnarounds to the to the uh, property lines? The paved areas, the property lines and stuff like that. I I know there's a section of code, I gotta look at it. As far 10 as foot? Landscape. Yeah. Is yeah. it the 10 foot step back requirement? Whether it be 10 foot or there's other buffering for multifamilies and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, we have about 13 or so, 13 to 15, depending okay. on where you look. So. We, we also had concerns on the slope of the driveways and access points and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't, Brennan, I'm not sure what you have it at right now. Um, 
obviously we have, there's some requirements that we have to look at. So uh, I, I thought what I'll do is I'll do a quick um, review of the code and see what the terminology is. I think there's a, a waiver allowance if in fact you are over the threshold by the planning board, which will be subject to uh, myself and Fletcher's and Chris's review of that, of that, of that roadway. Okay, so uh, the design standards uh, for the roadway design, um, you know, max out at eight percent. Okay. We don't we don't get to eight percent. Well, okay. we get to eight percent, but we don't go over it. Should I say? Eight um, percent. Okay. That's yeah. good then. Okay. Yeah, that's the going up that hill right there. We got a little bit of a cut cutting into that hill. Um, you know, yeah, there you go. It goes up to about eight feet cut, but then we level back out as soon as we get to the top. Okay. Of the hill. Um, Perfect. You're, you're missing a little bit for this house. Yep. We'll get that straightened out. Okay. Um, the, uh, the the fire access app, the fire apparatus access roads and turnarounds we're maxing out at ten percent. Um, yeah, there you go. The Every and this, this is proposed parking over here. Those four, those uh, six spots, yeah. Now those are parallel parks. Yep. So what we have is we have three three parking spaces per unit. Um, that's how we figure. That's what we. That's where we came up with the parallel parking. Came up with the additional spaces. Um, so you've got two: one in the garage, one in the driveway, and then one extra space that's not located in the townhouse located parallel parking or an auxiliary space somewhere. So um, that model seems to work real well for the uh, developer. Uh, these guys have developed quite a few townhouse homes in Webster. Uh, they're just finishing up a big um, facility down in Penyan off Puga Lake. Um, we've got a lot of others as well. They, uh, we've included Hopewell piece in here just as a complete set. These will be the same set. We'll send up the Hopewell also. Um, reference for reference. It's it's our understanding that this was still. Uh, we anticipate this being on the April nineteenth town board meeting for the MUO review. Obviously, that's the purview of the town board. We're not sure which direction they'll go, but. Uh, placement of this onto a planning board for preliminary review would be predicated based on whatever the town board decision is, if that makes sense. Okay. We anticipate them on the 19th, and then likewise, this would be placed, Chris, correct me where I'm wrong, I think the May 25th board meeting, assuming the town board yeah. gives us the thumbs up. I, the utility plans are kind of lacking any information on them. We'll have that all updated on Friday. Okay. Is there any reports, uh, Brennan, that you guys have associated with it, like an engineering report, drainage reports, anything that you could supply with us, or do you want to hold off until the, the Monday the 19th? We um, will provide you the uh, reports. We're planning on Friday having a preliminary set of plans, preliminary set of uh, engineers report for the whole project. Um, the and then we'll fill in that utility information that you were just asking about, correct? Okay. Yeah, because that will be likely required as part of the review. Um, one other thing is I believe this is a type one action, Brennan, due to disturbance. Uh, anything over 10 acres of disturbance, I believe, triggers it to be a type one. Okay. So we would, the short form would have to be elevated to a full EAF. So if you can include that in your revision package, that would allow us to do that coordinated review. Okay. Okay. Brennan, have you submitted your uh, Hopewell application for the uh, single family lots? No, um, the uh, the big part of this is in Candagua. Um, you know, with the rezoning and everything, um, the Hopewell piece will lag a little bit, uh, but I hope to have approvals right around the same time. Because the Canandaigua approval would be conditional or require the extension of the street to County Route 18. So right. you, you're going to need at least to put the street in, I guess, whether you get the building. Right. 
subdivision. Whether we get subdivision on, on lots or not. I mean, that's a different story, right? So. Okay. Yeah. Those were I thought those were my thoughts. I don't know if you guys have anything additional. You were talking traffic. You were talking stormwater reports, stuff like that. Yeah, the engineer report in the drainage. Uh, he mentioned he would have that to us on Friday. Uh, traffic. Thanks, Chris, for reminding me. Traffic, Brennan. Um, ultimately, it's DOT in the county uh, decision. Right. But anything that you could support that with, whatever. Yeah, um, right. whatever calcs that you have on that that says analysis wise that you have, I think would be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll put that in the engineer's report. So that works. And I don't know what you have as far as site distances. I don't know if you put it somewhere. Yeah, I actually, I guess on the existing conditions plan there, but it's uh, it's better than a thousand, I believe, either way. Oh, uh, this. All right. Yeah, it's, we have it. I'll get okay. it for you. Cool. Yeah, as you know, the planning Great. board will be very concerned about aesthetics, uh, the view to the lake, the view from the lake. I know we talked about it a little bit in the sketch plan, but um, yeah. I guess rendering of the townhouses, what they're going to look like, any way you can give a perspective, uh, yep. that would be helpful too. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Get some sleep. Yeah, Brennan, get some sleep, man. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Not for a little while, at least. Thanks, guys. Not anymore. Yep. Take care, man. Okay. So, um, got, Friday. He'll give it to you guys on Friday. Call. I don't know who they're from. Okay. Yeah, you got to turn your voice on there, Michelle. Are we all set? Oh, we're all set. Are you all set? <laughs> I'm good. Got enough I work to wait do? Till Friday. Yeah, funny. I got I'm determinations lucky. to write. Lance is going to do some checklists and <laughs> John's I, I, I promise you, thankfully, we don't have 17 applications like the last time. <laughs> I will a week get and a half today. Determinations. <laughs> okay, so all see right. most of you folks tomorrow night. Yes, definitely. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks.